From the News Channel 5 Network, this is Morning Line with Nick Barris. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining us on Morning Line. Nick Barris coming to you on a Tuesday. And today, it's an important day, an especially important day. Not just for the entire country, but especially here in the state of Tennessee, um, as uh, we're acknowledging 100 years since women were finally given the right to vote in this country. Hard to believe there was a time when they could not vote and women's suffrage and the state of Tennessee played a key role in that and being the 36th and final state to vote to ratify that to allow them to have the right to vote. We're going to talk a bit about that in the first part of our show. Just get some background history on that if you have a question or two along those lines but a time to celebrate that. And then um, later in the program we'll be joined by uh, Metro Vice Mayor Jim Shulman coming on to talk about what we can expect with some key pieces of uh, I guess, um, you know, suggestions, ordinances that will be discussed tonight at this council meeting as well as where we stand right now on uh, COVID-19 and, you know, the phases as, you know, the, the mayor easing up a bit with regard to bars and things like that. We'll get into that with uh, the vice mayor coming up later in the program. But first, uh, let's introduce our guest this morning to talk about it. Rory Dicker is with us. Good morning, Rory. She's director of the, uh, the Margaret Cunningham Women's Center. Nice to have you on, ma'am. Thank you for having me. Good morning. Well, all right. So, um, yeah, you're smiling. This is a, a big day, I suppose, to, to look back to think that it's been a century. And I just want to get your thoughts on this. I mean, here at News Channel 5, we've been spending several weeks leading up to this moment, you know, doing several stories on the history, not just of that movement, but also of what happened here in the state of Tennessee. What are your thoughts as we look now, 100 years later, to women right to vote? Well, it's a really exciting day for us to be um, and to be alive and to be part of this history. I think back to my own, you know, going with my parents to vote, and I never really thought that women couldn't vote as I was growing up um, in New York. But yeah, as you dig deeper in and you realize um, things about the history of women and voting, um, it's fascinating. And then to be in Nashville, Tennessee, uh, where Tennessee was the 36th state and played such an important role, it's really exciting and important to commemorate this day. It really is. Talk maybe, if you will, if you can, historically speaking, you know, your understanding of it. Up until this time, 100 years ago, the what, what was the attitude in this country? I, of course, men, you know, making many of these decisions. But was it that they just didn't feel that women back then should have a say because maybe they weren't involved or somehow not qualified to have a voice in their government and on key issues? I, I, it's just hard for me to even say that and imagine it. But was that the way it was back then? It really was. Um, I mean, one thing to consider is that in the United States, um, women really didn't have rights. And I'm talking about white middle class women. Um, they followed the English common law, which we think of as it's called coverture. And so women were civilly dead. And that meant that they couldn't keep their wages that they earned. They couldn't inherit property. They couldn't sue. They couldn't enter into contracts. Um, they couldn't vote. I mean, and that's that's why when somebody married, she would take her husband's name because mm -hmm. she became the person. She, her personhood was absorbed into her husband, um, so she no longer had that civil identity. So it was very natural for for people to expect that women wouldn't be able to vote. And you know, the other thing to consider is that they weren't educated as well. So. Um, they didn't really have um, access to a post-secondary education um, and some were educated at home and were very well educated. For example, Elizabeth Cady Stanton, who was a suffragist, um, a women's rights activist, she certainly was and some other women were too. Lucy Stone uh, went to Oberlin and she paid her way uh, to go to college there after working as a school teacher. So, I mean, there were women who had good education, but um, that was another reason that they were excluded from that. And they were considered the keepers of the home. Um, they were considered to be um, the domestic, kind of the angel in the house. And again, I'm talking about uh, white women in the 19th century. 
Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just it's real interesting to hear you mention that about women taking their husband's name and 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 how hard it is to change traditions and maybe this is just me speaking and I know some of our viewers are going to say Nick it's tradition I'm glad I know plenty of women that that think it's wonderful that when they get married they get to take their husband's name I for one for me, it remains to this day a head scratcher. Why should a woman have to give up their identity when they get married to a guy and they act as though it's a tradition and yet this tradition dates back to a time when they weren't allowed to vote and that's why their name just went because they didn't have the power. And it's, it's interesting to me, I'm just wondering, since you work at a women's center, what your thought is on that with regard to even today that tradition continues and I work with a vast majority of women here at this station who have gotten married and they've taken their husband's name and are very happy about it and I'm glad for them. I don't get it. Well, I mean, it's not something that I um, get too worked up over yeah. because, I mean, I, I didn't change my name, but I have my father's name. So, I mean, it's we, we live in a patriarchy. Yeah, <laughs> we can't we deny do. it. So, um, you know, and I think it's a choice that, that people um, make and and they do what they wish with their name and a lot of people hyphenate and, and so on yeah they've kind of evolved well i just thought that was interesting that way because i can tell you this i wouldn't take <laughs> someone else's name i just wouldn't i don't get it i still i just don't get it but um yeah I, i'm wondering too as we celebrate this 100 year anniversary and it was a wonderful thing and women have certainly come a long way i'm just wondering you know when you talk about what they were up against back then and what growth i mean I think being from a women's center and the studies that you're involved with now, I mean, there are still inequalities, would you not agree, when it comes to women in society today, even though, you know, they've had voting rights for 100 years? Yeah, absolutely. And we, you know, the, the 19th Amendment didn't magically uh, turn everything around, right? And even it didn't give everybody the right to vote, you know, so keep in mind that there was definitely voter suppression that kicked in immediately after the ratification, particularly in southern states where black women were not able to exercise the franchise. But we still, you know, don't have childcare or equal pay, you know, things like that that really would make society more equal. And in fact, Alice Paul, who was one of the, uh, she was the founder of the National Women's Party um, and a suffragist, she started to write the Equal Rights Amendment, which she wrote with Crystal Eastman in 1923. And we haven't had the ratification of the Equal Rights Amendment either. So that's another thing that we could be working towards. So yes, it's not a given. Um, these rights that we are really commemorating today, you know, they, they, they aren't a given and they can be taken away. And so it's important for us to cherish them and work to make sure that we can exercise the right to vote. Yeah, and it is amazing when you think about it, um, you know, this is going to be a presidential election year and we've seen more and more women obviously in politics and we have another woman now who's going to be a vice presidential candidate named a black woman at that. So, I mean, you, you just see, and, and it's still 100 years later, and we haven't seen a lot of that, but I think that's another stride forward. Would you agree? Oh, absolutely. I mean, and I think that's why people were so excited in the 2016 election to see a woman running, uh, Hillary Clinton running, sure. and now Kamala Harris as the vice presidential candidate. And then I think the other sort of important thing to point out, too, is that voting is a local issue. So even here in Nashville, we have more women on the city council than we ever have before. So it's really exciting and important, I think, for us to really think widely about women and the vote and how they can get involved politically and exercise their rights so that we, I mean, it's really a beautiful thing to see. And it's so symbolic and wonderful. Um, and significant historically that we've had these candidates that we'd like to see them in office too for our daughters and our sons to see but um, also to think about the meaningful legislation that gets enacted on the local level and sort and the influence that women can play in those arenas so the, the, i think that that's as, as significant a thing to consider well and it's interesting i you know it's hard to understand you know living here in nashville i see that we have so many events scheduled for today and acknowledging this for the state of tennessee i don't know i, I imagine this this milestone is being acknowledged across the country but you could you talk just a little bit as we kind of wrap things up about you know the significance of tennessee as we've said it was the last state to get in line to ratify they needed 36 and i you know it was close and there was 
was some discussion and and it happened and there may have been even some hard feelings after it finally did get that last vote to pass it. Um, what about that and the significance here today as we kind of, uh, you know, commemorate this moment in this state? Yeah, no, it's exciting to be um, in Tennessee and to be here in Nashville and to realize that we are the perfect 36, as they say, the, the 36th state to ratify. Um, and to, to sort of think about the role that we played in history. And I think that, that there was that push in 1920 to get the ratification before a presidential election. Um, and so it's just exciting to know that this is being commemorated. And another time that people commemorate is August 26th, which is Women's Equality Day. So um, that's when the Constitution really was changed. Mm -hmm. um, so that's another important uh, date to consider. Well, I think it's a good thing to talk about. And like I said, we'll have several stories on it today on the News Channel 5 network and uh, a lot happening in town to celebrate this. I really appreciate you coming on just to talk a bit about it. It's definitely worthwhile talking about. And like I said, it's still amazing that there was a time, but it was 100 years ago. So, you know, I, I think it's a, it's a great thing to think about. Well, thank you for having me. That's a pleasure. Thank you, Roy, for joining us. Roy Dicker, and uh, she was on this morning to join us to talk about women's suffrage 100 years ago, and uh, we're going to celebrate it all day. Thanks for her coming on this morning. She's director of the Margaret Cunningham Women's Center. We're going to take a break. When we come back, as I said, we're going to shift gears from that uh, to talk with Metro's Vice Mayor Jim Shulman and uh, see where we stand of late here in the city of uh, Nashville with regard to COVID. Also, some other things they're going to be uh, considering tonight at the council meeting, so stay tuned for that. We'll be back with more right after this.